Good evening. My name is Philip Wollen from Australia. In a past life, I was Vice President of Citibank. But for the past 30 years, I've personally supported some 500 projects in about 40 countries for children, animals, the environment and social justice. So I have some first-hand experience in the field. I understand what makes a truly outstanding organisation. So today I'd like to speak to you about the International Anti-Poaching Foundation. I am providing a matching grant of $100,000 to IAPF and I invite you to contribute as generously as you can. So let me tell you why. For transparency I should disclose that I am an honorary member of the International Advisory Board. I've been a donor to IAPF for over a decade and I have visited their operations center, met their rangers in Africa, flown over the killing fields in the helicopter, and given speeches at universities, congresses, and parliaments on every continent on their behalf. I am full of admiration for this exemplary organization, its rangers, its staff, volunteers, and donors, and in particular, its founder, Damien Manda. What they have done is simply astounding. Now, the great astrophysicist Carl Sagan described a photograph from the Voyager spacecraft of a tiny microscopic pinhole dot in space. It is planet Earth, an insignificant speck lost in a cloud of galaxies. Carl Sagan described planet Earth as our beautiful home out of pale blue dot suspended on a sunbeam. What an arresting, captivating, enchanting thought. Our pale blue dot, our home, the only home we've ever had, suspended on a sunbeam. Well, today on this pale blue dot, our beautiful home, human beings comprise 30% of the mass of land animals. Non-human animals in the slaughterhouses account for 66%. And wild animals living freely in their natural environment are decimated down to a mere 4%. 70% of all the birds on the planet, descendants of the dinosaurs, are imprisoned in cages awaiting slaughter at the blood-stayed hands of cruel humans. We have turned Carl Sagan's beautiful pale blue planet Earth into blood-stained planet slaughterhouse. Now in human history, only 100 billion human beings have ever lived. Seven and a half billion people are alive today. And we torture and kill two billion sentient, living, loving animals every week. And we stab and suffocate one billion ocean animals every eight hours. Trillions of fish are ground up into pellets to feed to livestock. Vegetarian cows are now the world's largest ocean predators. The oceans are dying in our time. By the next generation, all our fisheries will be dead. The lungs and the arteries of the earth. Oceans sequester more CO2 than all the forests of the world combined. Every second breath of oxygen we inhale comes from the ocean photosynthesized by phytoplankton and seaweed. And we treat this precious life support system as a private pantry and as a public toilet. The Pacific gyra now is so full of plastic, junk and human feces, it has created a floating footprint bigger than India. Adding insult to injury, the runoff from farming creates hypoxic dead zones of one million square kilometers. It is poisoning the oceans, the birthplace from which all life sprang billions of years ago, and suffocating all our fellow creatures, our cousins, who still live there today. 10,000 entire species are wiped out every year because of the actions of one species, ours. A puny, reptilian brain, biped human primate with an opposable thumb. And we now face the sixth mass extinction in cosmological history. If any other organism did this, a biologist would call it a virus. 
it is a crime of unimaginable proportions. There are two peak predators on this planet, humans on land and orcas in the ocean. In the 20th century, humans killed 200 million members of their own species. Orcas killed none. And don't expect any protection from your own governments either. In the 20th century, 100 million people have been killed by their own governments. Victor Hugo said there is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. But I say there is nothing more destructive than a bad idea whose time has passed. The time for killing animals has passed. And this is not just about animal rights, it's also about human wrongs. Animal protection today is now the greatest social justice issue since the abolition of slavery. It is a revolutionary event more powerful than the Industrial Revolution, the Reformation, the Hubble Telescope, or anything ever conceived by Galileo, Copernicus, Einstein, Darwin, or Freud, because it protects the most precious of all things, life. We are on the right side of history, creating a new age of enlightenment, the second renaissance, and this time not just nurturing art, science and ideas, but protecting and preserving every living being and their environments in perpetuity on the beautiful pale blue dot suspended on a sunbeam. Now, entrepreneurs and their advisors agree to grow an enterprise, you have three main strategies. You can build a bigger enterprise, that is, grow it organically, or you can buy another enterprise and merge their operations, or you can bond with another enterprise by cooperatively sharing your resources to achieve mutual goals. To employ a business example, if you want to grow, you can build a factory, or you could buy a competitor, or you can bond with a supplier or a customer. IAPF has chosen to bond with stakeholders in Africa, governments, communities, and other NGOs. And as a consequence, its geographic footprint, its effectiveness, and its potential have grown exponentially. Now, when I first met Damien Mander over a decade ago, IAPF was a small organization punching above its weight. Today, it employs a team of over 270 people, and right now we are recruiting an additional 100 female rangers on the ground. It covers Southern and Eastern Africa, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Mozambique, and Botswana. And management contracts now cover 15 million acres, extending 20 to 45 years, plus 40 miles of ocean frontage. Now, the projects I support, like IAPF, are more than just activists. I see them as first responders, like firefighters who run into burning skyscrapers, brave citizens who swim out to rescue drowning strangers caught in a rip, ordinary Germans who risk their lives to hide terrified Jews from the encroaching Nazis, and simple white folk who fearlessly establish the Underground Railroad, saving Negro slaves fleeing their brutal captors. Now the sine qua non, the essential prerequisite for national prosperity can be distilled into three simple words. The empowerment of women. Most economists would agree. Empowering women boosts every key performance indicator in progressive nations. Give a woman a job, access to credit, a cell phone, a polling booth, and control over their own reproductive faculties, and everything gets better. Infant mortality, health, life expectancy, household income and savings, children's education, GDP, tax receipts, 
and civil harmony. It doesn't matter where these qualities are enshrined. Everything gets better. It just does. Across the alphabet or across the world from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. The results are the same. Communities thrive, environments flourish, deserts bloom, economies boom, nations prosper. The rising tide lifts all boats. My friend Damien Mander is not an economist, but he figured it all out by walking around the bush, listening, thinking, and observing. So if you want proof, let me speak of IPF's Akashinga project. This team of women's only rangers is drawn out of marginalized patriarchal systems. But I see them as more than just women only rangers. I see them as respected crime fighters, community leaders, breadwinners, and the beating heart of a resurgent Africa. They are no longer prisoners of an impoverished, housebound domestic paradigm. They are now skilled professionals, highly trained, in uniform, educated and inspired. They now receive a guaranteed paycheck to support their families. Most of all, they now have pride, self-confidence and skills, knowing that they are valued for their contribution to their communities their environment, and their country. IPF's anti-poaching squads protect Africa's wild animals like elephants, rhinos, hippos, lions, giraffe, and bison, to name but a few. These iconic terrestrial animals are recognized and beloved all around the world, even by those who have never seen them. Decent people would recoil in horror to discover that these majestic animals are being cruelly driven to extinction by hunters and poachers for fun, fashion and profit. Believe me, if we can't save these glorious, iconic animals, what chance is there to save the deer, the koala, the kangaroo, the gorilla, the crocodile, the swordfish or the whale? Or the bees. IAPF is the last and best chance we have of saving our animal cousins and ourselves. Over the past three decades I've worked with hundreds of organizations around the world and they all have fine qualities all of their own. But over the years my thinking has evolved. I have identified a special kind, a rare breed of proactivist in a class of its own. Now, most NGOs would say, quite truthfully, there is a disaster looming on the horizon. Support us and we will warn the world. But at IAPF we say, there is a disaster looming. Support us and we will stop it. So please support IAPF. This is an important project. You won't regret it. Thank you.